Hello and welcome to our Saturday stream. Uh, I'm Josh and this is our map and image creation. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Sorry for being a little bit late. Um, but uh, here we are. We're finally up and running and rolling along here. I hope everyone's having a great week. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, there is a lot of new features, J-Rock, coming out in the future. Uh, but I don't have any to show off today. Uh, but there is going to be some pretty massive uh, map creation changes that will be on the way uh, at some point that are in the works right now, uh, which I am super excited about and cannot wait to uh, be able to show you guys. But uh, that's, that's going to be a little bit in the future. Uh, so anyway, thanks, everyone. Uh, let's, uh, let's jump right into it today. Um, Let's see, last week we made a really cool map here. Uh, this kind of, uh, we, uh, I showed off how you can create, um, I, don't, I don't have anything that I can uh, actually show you or demonstrate, but uh, um, I'll just, just so you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very cool. Uh, so last week we demonstrated how you can create uh, puddles and whatnot. Uh, very easily without using anything but uh, um, some of the uh, built-in features of Fantasy Grounds. So we created all these little puzzle, uh, puddles and, and uh, this kind of swampy scene. Uh, we also built like a little throne in here with lots of cool uh, elements that uh, uh, kind of interact together here. And we put these all on separate layers so that we can easily interact with them. So here we have our top layer. Uh, so if we if we so wish, we can kind of just hide this and uh, interact with the system this way. Uh, so we have a question from Bangs Naughty Bits, and the question is: Is there a way to see what packs are being used in a map? Um, not currently. There is not. Um, so the way that it's kind of set up. Uh, but that is something that could probably be done in the future. Um, so all of that is handled on the back end. And the way that it actually works, the way that this system kind of works is there is a reference in the uh, XML file for the image uh, data uh, to the location. So it would be possible to, to kind of figure that out, but uh, you'd have to do it through the uh, database, the DB file. Um, but uh, there isn't anything that's, that's, that's prevalent in the front of uh, Fantasy Grounds at the moment. Uh, great, so uh, this is what we made last week. So we're going to be making a new map today. Uh, that map only took us about uh, an hour and a half, two hours to make. Um, so it's a pretty simple kind of... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it does kind of look like uh, something that you would see in something like that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. And then the week before, we've been working a lot on uh, with these jungle assets that have just come out this last week. This is what we made uh, the week before. We made this lovely map of a uh, jungle bridge. Uh, and in here, um, I can actually remember the, the maps that we, we used, the map packs that we used. And this would be the new uh, Jungle 2 map pack. Uh, in addition to that, we also use this, which is from the uh, Goblin Camp. And uh, some of the base elements we got from our uh, 2019 art package. And I believe that's the only three art packs that we, we used in the creation of that. Uh, that's, that's not true. These uh, posts and the rope uh, brush that we used uh, came from uh, one of the coastal uh, map packs. Yeah, so that's great. So we'll, we'll, we'll dive right in. We'll make a new map today. Do you guys have any uh, suggestions on what we should be making for a map today? I'm open to any sort of suggestion whatsoever. So if you guys have anything that you would like to see made, uh, or if there's anything that... Uh... Oh, yes, uh, Alex. We can do all kinds of crazy cool effects uh, in here. Uh, we've even done uh, tons of cool, uh, like sci-fi stuff. So we created this this cool spaceship uh, a few weeks ago, 
And as you can see, we, we created these, these cool effects for uh, lighting and whatnot coming off of the engines. And then we created a cloaked version of this so that you could uh, um, actually put your uh, spaceship into Uh, so you can do lots of cool kind of effects and whatnot uh, inside of Fantasy Grounds. Oh yeah, we could do a burial chamber. A small outpost base in the jungle. Something with high ground. Oh, no, we certainly don't have to stay in the jungle. Oh, yeah, we've we've done lots of uh, underwater stuff. There's an entire underwater map package uh, that you can use. We've done lots of underwater stuff. And uh, so. So why don't we take a couple of elements from each of these and, and we'll kind of uh, make a conglomerate of, of all of these great ideas. So we'll do, uh, definitely John Miller, we'll do a, uh, a cliff face uh, or a plateau, uh, we'll, depending on the size of the map and how we do this. We'll do some underwater aspects as well as, um, why don't we do something, we could do like, um, let's do something with elevation because you guys really, uh, seem to be going along uh, those lines. And we could do winter at the top, right? We could do a, a nice little transition. Maybe a, a jungly base, and then we'll transition up into uh, the winter aspects. So I could show you guys how you can easily kind of transition from one biome to another. And we could actually do it uh, multi-layered, right? We, we could do, maybe we'll do uh, kind of the edge of a mountain or a plateau. And then uh, we could do a cave entrance. And we could do like a multi-layered kind of thing where uh, maybe the cave goes down into some underwater aspects as well. Yeah, it sounds cool. We could do, maybe we'll do like the cliff face uh, on the edge of the water. We'll do maybe a waterfall. You guys think about that, like a, a waterfall that has a uh, perhaps a hidden hidden thing behind it. If, I think. Let me just check. Uh, we did one a while ago. Let's 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 look in our our uh, our modules here. Uh, one that we did for the Savage Stream. I just want to make sure that we don't uh, duplicate because I, I put all of these up for free uh, on the forge. And so let me just load this up and then we can kind of check it here. Uh, we did this waterfall. I just want to make sure that we don't do anything that's too, um, too similar to what we have created in the past. And here we have. Uh, we created this nice little. Um, this, this nice little scene with, with a uh, hideable uh, cave entrance behind the waterfall. And then we created the cave over on this side with all kinds of cool stuff inside of it. Um, oh, hey, Derek. Yeah, this was, a, this was a fun map to make. We even did like ice and whatnot in the, in the river. Uh, and we did this nice little transition. So we could do something like this, but let's do like jungle uh, at the bottom. And uh, we'll do, we'll create um, uh, something a little bit, let's do something a little bit more of a slope rather than the, the, the this cliff face, maybe. Uh, well, let's just get going and start creating. And we'll see where it goes. How about that? Uh, this is actually uh, under uh, Savage Stream. So this will all be from Smiteworks. So if you just look up Smiteworks, um, 
official kind of content. Uh, this this will be on there. Uh, there's there's I believe four map packs. Um, you are required to either have the R subscription or own the map packs in order to use these. These are just the uh, technical data. Uh, but if you want to, we can we can kind of run through these really quickly. So we have uh, this uh, starter cave on this particular one. Um, and then we have a forest and a lake area here. And this is just, this is all from one uh, module. And these all have all of the line of sight and everything uh, all done for you, uh, including effects layers and uh, the lighting system. So if you want to look at it the way the players would see it, here we are. And here we can toggle off and you can see that we have... Um, all of these are, are implemented in these for you. We have this cool one that we never actually got to use uh, on the stream itself. I, th I believe that there should be uh, four of them on there. There's the 2019, there is uh, Saturday stream one and two, and then there's the Savage stream. These ones all come from the Savage uh, stream one. And this one we created this cool if you look in here, we have this mist uh, that is kind of uh, moving around inside of here. Super cool. Uh, we were going to create like this uh, kind of um, radioactive cloud uh, in this uh, little ravine here. Uh, we also did, uh, yeah, some some classic kind of ones, and these can be used in any of your games. So these are these were all fun, super fun to make. Uh, we did some nice color variations on this trees, make it seem kind of autumn. And then there's a couple of uh, ruins as well, uh, and these are just kind of very. Uh, simple, straightforward maps, uh, generic, that can be used in anything. Uh, in the 2019 uh, art package, or 2019 rather, I say 18 or 19. Now these are all uh, maps that we made on the stream a long time ago. Uh, back when the uh, uh, map tools first came out, in the uh, beta version, Oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, you know what? I don't have that enabled, but I will get one for next time. I'll, let me make a note of that. And so that I can uh, make sure that... Uh... Oh, did I say 19? Thanks, Drake. And here we have a forest map with a nice little uh, water area down here. And Oh, this was a, uh, this was a fun one. We did a uh, forest to swamp transition. And you can see we used a few different types of assets in this. And what we did, and this is kind of what I was talking about, what we'll create today. We'll do a nice little transition from one biome uh, to the other. And we did some, it looks like that we've, uh, some things have changed since then. So this needs to be adjusted a little bit for the water. And we did uh, a couple of other ones here as well. Oh yeah, this is the one with spider webs. These ones we made a long, long time ago. And then we also have um, the ones that are for the stream, one and two. I think I can just uh, search by author. And I think if I just put in here, uh, JW. I should load these up in here just to have them as reference at, at, at any rate. And in this one, we have a listing of, uh, see, there's, there's going to be quite a few maps in each one of these, as you can see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one has quite a lot of maps in it, and so does this one. And all of these we created uh, live, so you can always go back. If you have any questions about how I created them, uh, you should be able to find them. They're either on the YouTube channel. I, a lot of these I think we made specifically while we were just streaming on Twitch. So they, you might have to find them on Twitch. Um, but all of that is available to you guys. So you can go back and watch the uh, process uh, through all of them. And uh, so, yeah, we made a large cavern 
area here. Just zoom in. And we made Cliffs and a Lighthouse. Yep, yeah, uh, all of these are pretty, and these are the more recent ones. Oh, I understand, John. Yeah, I'll get uh, I'll get something and, and and get that all squared away for it. That's a, that's a great idea, anyway. Um, but I'll I'll definitely make sure that that gets uh, taken care of for you. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea too, Drake. And we created uh, lots of cool stuff. Um, here's the snow map that we made a while ago, and this has multi layer as well. Let's just zoom in here. I'll uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger, and I can kind of show you guys. This is something that we made with this nice uh, snowy road. Uh, we have some snow falling. This is kind of gets us in the mood, and then we have this cool. And this is a multi-layered map, so we have it divided into two um, actual uh, folders here. And if you open up the folders, you can see what's inside of each one of these. We have our cave system, which is over here. Uh, so all you have to do is when your players actually come, we did some cool like uh, monster footprints uh, coming around the cave. And one of the cool things that I like to do with these elements, so you can see here, if we go into the top map, um, we have our tracks right here. And uh, what we can actually do is hide these. And I like to uh, hide this and then have my players either make like a survival roll or whatever they want to do. And if they find this, then I will uh, expose them. So uh, here we, what we can do is when your players come up to the cave entrance, uh, we can just hide this map and then boom, they're instantly at the front of the cave uh, and then can go in and begin to explore. Uh, each one of these has, um, it doesn't look like that there's any uh, line of sight that is uh, actually on this map, but we could put that in. And then uh, the players can come in and explore, and then once they leave the cave, boom, uh, we can bring this right back, and they're back out. And you can do the same thing with buildings as well. And that's one of the real advantages of the way that the layer system is created inside of Fantasy Grounds. Uh, we also did this nice little transition of the ice and uh, created lots of cool stuff there. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, Alex. Yeah, we're, we, I'm here almost every Saturday. We start around 3 p.m. We've got a little bit of a late start today. Uh, and I usually run till about 6, and this is what we do. We create maps, and I go through... Uh, and we work exclusively inside of Fantasy Grounds Unity. Uh, and I use, um, I don't believe that I've used any other map packs. I just use our in-house created ones, the ones that I make. And uh, yeah, we can, you can pretty much make whatever you wish. So if you get the R subscription, which is an amazing deal, I think, uh, which is $5 a month or $50 a year, uh, you have access to uh, all of these. And so far, I think we've released over uh, 30 products. So, uh, and, I, and I bring, we usually release uh, between two or three uh, a month. So if we go into our assets, you can see here all of these FG ones. So FG 2000, uh, abandoned places all the way through. So all of these map uh, packs, all of the FG ones uh, you'll have access to. Thousands of images, uh, and uh, so let's uh, let's just go through. Some of these are really cool. I, this uh, hellish forest was a really fun one that we created on the stream a while ago, uh, and again, this was another one that I uh, did as a uh, as a cool little demonstration. And here you can see we made some nice cliffs. Oh, thank you so much, Brad. And this is where we uh, did some really cool kind of transitions uh, from this rather barren, uh, hellish area. You can see we have a nice river of blood here. Uh, and this kind of transitions into uh, this lovely little forest area over here. Uh, 
Uh, Alex, it's been uh, it's been out for uh, quite some time, a year now or so, I believe. Or maybe it's been maybe it's been just under a year uh, since the. Uh, but it's been it's been there for quite some time. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else have we made? This is kind of fun going back through all the stuff that we have made uh, on the stream. There's been a lot more uh, that we have created. I still have, I have other, uh, another module or two that are ready to go up here. Uh, let's see, uh, this is Spaceship 2. We already checked uh, that one out. This one's uh, an old bugged version uh, that's been fixed. Uh, let's see here. Snow Forest, and again, uh, these were all demonstrations of transitions uh, that you can do from one area to the next. And in this uh, demonstration, I actually talked about how you can, uh, even if something isn't seamless, what we actually did in the crease, let me unlock this, uh, is we duplicated one side, uh, so we did the entire side, and then we duplicated it and uh, I showed how you can make anything seamless. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could definitely uh, do that. Um, let's see. Yeah, these these uh, these ones were uh, in my. This is my my older module, so these ones are are bugged for me. But yours will be not bugged. Those are all fixed. That's like a space station and a spaceship. That we created. We also created this uh, this cool little sewer map, uh, and I was showing how uh, you can use lots of different elements. And if we if we turn on how the players would see it, um, different elements to create uh, anything that you wanted to. Even though that we didn't have uh, particular sewer specific uh, items. Uh, and this is this is what your players would see with like lighting coming down from from the top here. Uh, and if we turn off our lighting here, and this is what I actually I was demonstrating here, is how you can create um, an ambience, uh, a kind of a feeling, more from the lighting and the setup, and then you can from the actual uh, images themselves. So we, we just use some simple walls, uh, some floor tiles. I changed the color of the water to kind of green. Uh, and then we we drop that right in there. So boom, super cool. Now, what other ones did we create that was that was fun to do? Oh, we created this uh, this crashed spaceship. Uh, I wonder if this one is bu yeah, this one's bugged too on this particular version. Oh yeah, I forgot about those play games, Patty. I'm not sure. I could certainly throw them into the next module uh, if you guys wanted to use those. Great, okay, well let's, uh, that's enough reminiscing, I think. Uh, we can get back into creating something new today for you guys. You know what, John Miller? I believe that there is an extension that you can get that does that. I have seen that in the past. So I believe that there is an extension that already exists. Uh, and so what the suggestion was is, is it possible to have a token, a teleport from one spot on one map to another spot on another map? And I believe that there is a, an extension that does that. I don't know who created it or where it is. I just remember seeing it in the past. All right, so let's uh, let's jump right into this, uh, and we'll uh, we'll begin creating. I'll open up my assets window, and if anybody is new to this uh, this uh, map creation system, uh, I'll go kind of go through this.
and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go from scratch to make sure that everyone has a good understanding of how this kind of uh, interacts. And uh, so there's a couple of different ways that we can create our image uh, process here. We can either right click in our images window. And so uh, let's first talk about the difference between our assets and our images. Our images are things that we can share with our players. It can be a single asset, and we can just drag one asset over, uh, but it can also be um, a conglomerate uh, of all of the different things. So think of your assets as all of the pieces of the image that you're going to be sharing, and the image is, is it all as a bundle that you're, we're going to actually send to our players. So the image is just a record type. So if I, if I right click inside of this image window, you can see that I have the ability to create an item. And that's just going to create an empty image space for me. Now, it's not, this is not the only way that we can start this process. But uh, it is one way. Another way is we can just drag and drop uh, any one of these images into the image area here. So let me just close this down and I'll show that. Let me delete this. I'll right click and delete that. So let's start off and uh, we're going to create our ground first. It's always a good idea to create your base, uh, figure out the kind of size that you want to uh, be working with, um, and then uh, get all of those parameters kind of going and then build up from there. We're going to be doing some elevation that kind of goes up into uh, the winter area. So we're going to be using a bunch of different art packages. And we're also going to be using um, a lot of the built-in features here. So we'll be able to show off a lot of this stuff for you guys today. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the FG Art Pack 2019. And I just click on that, and then it's going to bring me into all of the subfolders. So uh, let's go into Tiles. I'm going to grab some of these tiles, uh, and I'm just going to build out a small little area over here. So I'll grab one of these base tiles. I think I'm going to use these lighter ones. Uh, the lighter dirt ones, uh, we might use some of the darker ones as well. But I'm going to use the lighter ones to kind of uh, help distinguish between the elevations. Uh, so one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that we want to think about is we're not just making uh, a recreation of a top-down environment. We're also making a usable play field. We want to think about the way that we use our colors, contrasts, and all of those things to make things uh, more... Uh, interactable and easily identifiable by our players. We don't want it to be too confusing. So by keeping this, uh, and I'll just grab one of these and I'll drop it right into here. And you can see this is going to instantly create a new uh, workspace for me. I'll just drag this out. And we can close this down now. We don't need that and I'll move this over. Let me zoom right in. And so you can see here we have, uh, and this already has some nice texture on it and whatnot. And uh, I'm going to go over into uh, my grid system. I'm going to change this to 100 by 100. And that's going to turn on our grid system. And then I'm going to click on the color picker underneath tint here. And I'm just going to move down the alpha channel. Uh, I'm not going to completely hide it. I want it to be a little bit uh, available to me to see. But I don't want it to interfere with my creation process. And now I can just drag and drop out uh, certain elements. And you can see that these all snap to the grid and all are seamless. They just all work together here. As long as I have uh, the same kind of element, right? as you can see here, we have uh, same color dirt to dirt or grass to grass. Uh, these will all work. And I'll just grab out a couple of these and we'll create a nice little space. Uh, I think each one of these are 10 by 10. And because we're going to be doing uh, some nice little elevation here, I'm not really worried too much about these. We're going to be using some uh, texture over the top of them and building some really cool stuff here. So this should be pretty fun. I'll grab out another one of these. We'll rotate it. And I'm just going to hit Control-C and then Control-V to make a new one. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to grab all of these. We're going to make a nice big map today. And so what I do is I select the top uh, layer here on the right hand side and I make this is got to be in the layers tab here. Hold down shift and uh, select the bottom one that's going to select all of them. And then I can come down here to duplicate all of these and I did. 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them over to here and I'm going to flip them. And boom, we have this uh, nice little area in here. And now this is uh, pretty uh, easily identifiable as something that doesn't really look that great, but this is just our base. We're going to we're going to build on top of this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to rename this folder ground. And I'm going to again select the top one, hold down shift and that's going to select all of these layers. And I'll grab this and I'm going to drop that. Oop, I'm going to drop it right into uh, the folder. Uh, maybe let's 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 see if I can get this. Uh... There we go. And now I can use this uh, as the uh, the uh, kind of master layer for all of my ground that's underneath it. And what that means is is now if I decide uh, that I want to change all of these colors. I can do it from the folder level, uh, as you can see here, and it's going to affect all of the layers that are inside of it. So whatever I put now inside of this folder will be affected by this. Uh, I can also now use this to move this around as one unit. Uh, and this becomes a very useful to us as, let, let's say, for example, we create a whole house with all of its interior and whatnot. I can put that into a single folder. Uh, and then move it around the map as one image. Great. So maybe what we'll do uh, is uh, let's let's actually um, add in a couple of these water elements as well. So I'll just grab maybe something like this. Or you know what? Let's not use these ones. We'll use the uh, water elements from uh, another art package. So we can kind of show off more than just Now I'm going to click on the, uh, the uh, FG Art Pack 2019 here at the top, and that's going to take me up into the uh, base area here where we were before. And I can go into Decorations. I click on Decorations, and uh, here we have a whole bunch of different images that we can use. And this is where I'm going to switch over to using the Painting Tools. So I'm going to select, select the uh, Painting tab up here, and then I'm going to take uh, one of these grass elements. Let's, let's grab this one. And I'm going to switch over to my stamp. Uh, I'm going to create a new painting layer. And I'm going to rename this one Ground uh, Texture. Now let's zoom in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to change the size of this image before I start stamping it around. I can also hold down Shift and my mouse wheel to rotate it. I can also hold down A, uh, and this will change uh, the opacity of this image with my mouse wheel. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start to stamp out uh, some nice little shapes here. And I'm going to think about, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll do our elevation uh, kind of across the map, maybe like through here. And I'm, I'm going to build some water up through here, and then we'll do like uh, some underground stuff, and we'll do some elevation. This might take us uh, a couple of episodes to do all of the different things. We might have to finish it up next time, but we'll see. We'll see how much we get done today. And I'm not going to worry about this side too much because we, we're going to be covering up some of this, possibly. We'll see. What we're kind of just going free form today. We don't have a uh, a real uh, set in stone kind of way that we're going to be approaching this. So and then I'm going to grab uh, this one, I believe. And you see, this is like uh, mud and rocks and things. And again, I'm going to hold down A, and I'm going to just lower down the opacity here. I'm just creating some interesting kind of um, variations in my texture here not too concerned about what's going on yet. And we're doing this all on this one painting layer. And once I'm done uh, with this particular layer, I'll probably drop it down into the folder as well. And I'm just going to create some nice little interesting stuff here. Great. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit this arrow, and that's going to bring me all the way back up into my uh, top level here. And now let's go into, uh, well, actually, let's, let's type in uh, Cliff 
brush. Let's let's so, so show some search functionality. And here you can see that uh, I'm going to type in uh, cliff brush, and here are all the different types of cliffs that are also brushes. And I can just type in cliff if I want to just see um, all of the different cliffs that I have uh, loaded up in here. Okay, so, and this is going to go through because I'm in my root uh, area up here at the very beginning before I've gone into any of the actual art packages. Uh, it's going to show me everything that I have. Right, so these are all the things that have cliff associated with them. And what I'm actually going to be using, uh, let's go back into the cliff brush. And this is um, one that's in uh, the uh, jungle art pack. Or we could actually use the one, uh, you know what, we could use a, a couple of different ones here. But we're going to do a nice little transition uh, into this, this winter-esque kind of thing at the top. Um, so the jungle one probably isn't going to be the best one for us to, to use here. So I'll, I'll have to think about this for a moment. Uh, what we should use for a nice uh, transition for that. Uh, we can create our own very easily. Uh, but I'm going to show off uh, using the brushes here a little bit. So yeah, why don't we use that? I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I'll type in click brush. And this is the one from our uh, jungle art pack. So if you hover over these, uh, you'll see that the first, uh, um, in the tool tip, the first name that is listed is the art pack where you can find these at. So here we have the winter art pack. Uh, and if you want to click on these, you can get a little preview image. And if you make this bigger, it'll enlarge the image as well. So here we have this like cliff, uh, icy cliff here. Uh, this one, again, is another variation of that. Uh, and then here we have these ones from... A jungle art pack. So if we, if we uh, FG jungle map pack too. Uh, so let's grab this one. I think this will work pretty well. Actually, you know what? Let's grab the other one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to drop it right into my little preview window. window and I'm going to select the line tool. And now I'm going to make this larger. Something that is uh, some, somewhat appropriate here. Now with the line tool selected, uh, I'm going to make, create a new uh, layer here. And I'm just going to call this one cliff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off uh, up in this corner and I'm going to kind of draw it across uh, and then down somewhere around here. I'm not going to worry too much about my cave entrance. Uh, I'll erase that out, uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll kind of build it up from there. And then we might change some of these tiles uh, to something else as well, uh, depending on how we want to do it. So here I'm going to hold down Control. And if I hold down Control, what that's going to do is it's going to snap to my grid system. And there's a, some really cool things that you can do with the grid system as well. Why don't I just show that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enlarge this. Let's make this twice as large, right, for the moment. And then I'm going to grab uh, these two elements here. And in back in the Layers tab, I'm just going to line this up uh, with the, this grid system here. And it'll still be lined up if I change this uh, to a lower version. But uh, this way, I'll have less uh, snapping elements for when I paint out my clip. Uh, which is kind of what I want here. Uh, make sure I have my image paint. So we can paint in like normal uh, colors or we can just do our images. We're going to be using our image here. And I'm going to hold down Control. Uh, let's actually make this uh, round, uh, an actual, let's make it like three, three by eight. Sure, that should be good. Uh, let's make it uh, a little bit smaller than that. And let's change the uh, aspect lock ratio. Let's make it a little bit shorter. So something like this. And I'm going to hold down Control. And as I said, I'm going to just click once with my left mouse. And then I can start to drag out this image. You see how it's, it's in the reverse direction? So I'm going to hit, hit Escape. And I'm going to flip it. And now when I drag it out, you can see it's going to be going in the, in the correct direction that I want it to be. Now I'm going to uh, release control, so I'm no longer snapping to the grid. The only reason I snap to the grid is because now it'll, it'll line right up with the edge of my map uh, area here. And I'm going to click again, 
And then I'm going to just start clicking out uh, where I want my cliff face to be here. And I'm going to use my middle mouse button to move the map around. <clears throat> and we'll do here. And then I'm going to hold down control at the end here. Uh, and then I can click and double click uh, to end it. So here we have this nice lined up little area here with the map. What I'll do is uh, transition this. You can see that this has uh, lots of uh, green kind of foliage and whatnot. We'll be placing some rocks over it and above it and doing lots of fun stuff. So uh, we can, we can uh, interact with this. But this is just going to be for using my, creating the base area. I'm going to go back and start working on uh, some of the lower stuff. I just want to have a good idea where the first transition to my elevation is going to be. Great. Now let's uh, hit this button and go back up. Uh, I might actually, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, well, no, that's pretty easy. Uh, I'll show you guys. There is a, you can actually, if you're going to be using something a lot, an image, and you don't want to have to keep searching for it, uh, you can drag and drop it uh, down into your toolbar uh, and have an easy access to it. So, for example, if I were, uh, let's go into, this is an interior map pack. Let's go into the furniture. And let's say we were going to be using lots of oh this 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 image here. I could instead of dragging it there, I can drag it down here, and now I have a, a constant reference to it, so I can drag and put it up in here, and so on and so forth. So just so that you guys are aware, uh, there is an easy way that you can access any image that you're using. And if you're not going to use it, you can just clear that slot. Let's delete that from our map. And I'm going to go back down into and begin to work on uh, some of these lower kind of stuff here. So in our coastal art pack here, I believe it's coastal map pack. One is where we do all of our base stuff, right? We, uh, we have all kinds of brushes for doing this stuff. Uh, we have lots of... Um, water backgrounds, and then all kinds of cool decorations for creating. And a lot of the map packs are specifically kind of designed for uh, fantasy versions, but that doesn't mean you can't use these in many other areas. We've, we've definitely dem demonstrated that before. We, al we also do have some sci-fi art packs and some modern apocalyptic art packs, uh, and there's a lot more coming out in the future as well. But in this uh, coastal one, uh, we're going to start to add in some of our water elements. So I'm going to do some water, and uh, we're going to kind of create our edge here and figure this out, uh, where this is going to go. And then we'll figure out, we'll probably do like a cave entrance here, feeling like, and we'll add in a water element down through here, maybe the edge, and then we can do a little bit of water kind of spilling out, and then we can do an underwater cavern. And that sounds pretty fun to me. So back in our coastal map pack, uh, I'm just going to grab this background, and I'm just going to drag and drop it out here. Uh, I don't know why it would have came out so small. Oh, I know why, because of this. Because I have set up uh, this, uh, this element. And it's, it, so the way that the, the uh, tile system works, you can uh, set up a predisposed size, and it will make all other uh, images kind of come to that uh, when this should be much larger. So let's make this uh, quite a bit larger. Um, click down here, let's switch over. Let's just see what, it, what its normal size is. And let's make this, uh, we might do a couple of these, but let's make this uh, 20 by 20. Is that the size of our map here? Well, let's make it, uh, let's make it half that size. And then we can do one here and one. Oh yeah, I forgot we changed the size of our grid system, which is why that is. And then let's duplicate that and bring that right over to be something like this. Cool. And then we can paint out uh, the edge here, our little uh, edge, and then we'll we'll paint it uh, right into uh, this area over here. And I'll show you guys how. You so 
So I'm going to actually um, keep this separate from my ground, I think, in case I want to do something different. Uh, we're going to do some areas, and we'll, we'll put this on top, but underneath our ground texture. So I'm just going to drag and drop these right down like this. Now let's go into our brushes, and here we have uh, some nice little brushes that we can use. Uh, and if you click on these, you can always get a little preview. If these images are too small. You can also right-click, uh, and you can zoom in. So you can zoom into these uh, images. Uh, you can also change the listing uh, if you want it to just be a, a list or if you want it to be a grid style. So uh, you can kind of set up your asset view uh, the way you wish. And so this is a kind of a rocky edge, uh, and it has uh, some elements here. Uh, this one is a cliff one with more rough water. And you can paint these out uh, just like we did our cliff. And we'll, we should actually probably redo our cliff now, right? We should have it come out and then uh, this way. So maybe we'll go back and redo that in a moment. And, uh, oh, yeah, we have this one, which is just uh, the water itself, which I think this is what we want to use. So I'm going to grab this and make sure I'm in my painting area over here. And I'm just going to drop this in here. And I'm going to make this to an appropriate size here. And then I'm going to use this to paint out uh, onto my landscape. And I can, I can change the way that this interacts here, right? I can, where we have this like rigid uh, kind of separation where no land has ever had this like squared off element like this. And let's just hide our cliff for a moment. And uh, uh, below, down and through here, uh, I can just begin to start painting, and this will immediately create a new painting layer. I'm going to hold down Control again so we can snap right to the edge over here. And you can see here we have created a new painting layer. And then I'm just going to uh, paint this up. And uh, I think we'll bring it in uh, to like here. Uh, and then I'm going to start to uh, change the way that this interacts here. Now, I'm not worried too much about uh, how far up it is at the moment. And then again, I'll hold down Control, and I'll double-click to end it. And that's a little bit wonky. I'll probably uh, erase uh, some of this edge, but maybe not. Um, you can also just erase this stuff if you want to. Let's bring it back in a little bit. But I can go back into my Layers tab now, and I'm going to use my arrow keys, and I can move this down uh, to an appropriate level. If I hold down Control, uh, I can do it pixel by pixel. I can find a really good area uh, or the way that I want this to uh, interact here. Now if I turn my cliff back on, uh, you can see uh, we're going to move this down in on top of our water. Now, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, right? So uh, I think what we'll do is uh, build this out. We'll, we'll bring the cliff out over this way, and then we'll do a nice little cool cave entrance here. And I think that will be pretty cool here. We're going to be doing some stuff out here, so where this interaction is a little bit wonky. Uh, but we can also fix that by going into these, and we can rotate these so that they go along with uh, the direction of uh, the water that we're kind of working with. You can see that that hides that uh, much better. That interaction is much more what we're looking for. Now I can match this right up uh, with my other cliff if I want to, uh, or I can erase this and uh, do it all over again because it's so easy to do. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's um, I think what we'll do is we'll just match it up here. So let's go to uh, cliff brush again, and we know that we grabbed this one. I might. Might uh, might be a little bit uh, a little bit wonky because we had this uh, set up a little bit different here, right? We had it uh, three um, by four. Is that what it was? No, two, not thirty-two. Yeah, I think that this was the size that we had done before. So back on my cliff layer. I can, uh, oh, we can remember we had to flip it, go in the direction that we wanted it to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly overlap it here. 
And what I'm doing is I'm just uh, clicking and starting it, getting that edge uh, pretty close to where I want it to be. I'm hitting Escape. There's, it's pretty close to right there. And yeah, something like that. And then we can bring it over to me. Perfect. And that's will come out over the water a little bit. And you can see we've already got a really nice base here uh, of what we want to create. Everything is pretty well organized still on this side. Uh, this will rename our, uh, let's just rename it coast. And so we know that this is the edge of the water that kind of comes in. Here's our water background. And what we can do is create a new folder and we'll call this water and drop this down in underneath our ground textures. And we'll grab this and drop this right into there. We might want our ground texture actually to be underneath our water, so we can kind of bring it up underneath the water's edge over here. That's probably the best way to do it. Because I'm going to go back into my uh, 2019 art pack. We don't want our grass uh, to be coming right up to the water's edge. And we're going to be creating a new layer up here above the cliff uh, that's going to kind of hide all of this stuff. That's why I don't really care too much about that. It's more about the front uh, edge there that I wanted to match up appropriately. And in the 2019 art package, if we go into our decorations, you're going to see that we have a nice little dirt, uh, round dirt brush here. And I'm going to change this over to a stamp mode. What I'm going to do is in here, you can see, uh, I can begin to uh, stamp this out along my water's edge here. I'm going to hold down A and lower down my opacity. And I'm just going to kind of click this around here. So you can see how we can build uh, back and forth. We can create some really very realistic and cool kind of interactions here between the images. So what I'm thinking what we'll do is we can do like our, our jungly kind of stuff down here. Uh, we'll begin to do some transitions. We'll do another couple of layers of elevation as it goes up. And at the very top, we'll have it wintry uh, over here. We might even want to expand our map over uh, and do lots of fun stuff on that side. There's a couple of different ways that we can kind of interact with this. Uh, we can do it like the other waterfall uh, that we created a while ago. Uh, and with that, we could create a separate map system, uh, which is our underground on this side. Uh, and we can even do some underwater stuff uh, out here as well. We're going to do some underwater caverns and whatnot. Uh, but uh, it's completely up to us how we decide that we want to create this. Awesome. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do just for our visual uh, clarity is I'm going to add in uh, up here on our cliff side, now that we have our front face of the cliff all set up, it's I'm going to fill in this area over here with a different type of ground type. I remember when I was talking before, and then we can, uh, if we can, if we want to, we can start to delete some of these areas underneath that we don't need. Uh, I like to do it this way just so that I have a good understanding about where everything is, the size that I want to make my map, and so on. Uh, but you, can, you guys can feel free to, to do this any way you wish. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll add in the different kind of elements here. And there's a couple of ways that we can kind of interact with the system here. So uh, creating a, a darker uh, kind of element, maybe we could do that uh, as it goes up. And we can do it right with uh, the, the brush that we're using right now, if we so wished. So let me uh, use the A to bring up the opacity of the image. Uh, and now we can actually click on the tint button here, the color picker, and we can change the colors of any image that we're actually working with. Oh, thanks so much, Bone Shooter. 
Glad to have you. So if I want to make this darker, for example, there's a couple of different ways that I can do it. So to maybe get it started, uh, I can use the actual eyedropper tool. And maybe we'll do something like this. So you can see uh, that'll do that. But it will always add, it'll sometimes do, uh, interact with the system a little bit differently than you expect because it will add on to the colors that you already have present in the image. So if this image was white, uh, it would uh, exactly match those colors. But because it already has some color of its own, it adds with the color picker to those colors. So what we can do now is readjust this a little bit because that's a little bit too vibrant. Uh, so let's bring down the red here a little bit. And we also want to bring down the green a little bit uh, with it. And that's a little bit too dark, right? Uh, so let's increase these. And bring our blue up to make it a little less and more like this color over here. I think that's going to work pretty good for us. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm not going to worry about it it's spilling outside of my map here too much. And I'm going to keep a pretty good size. Uh, so what I'm just going to do is, and I'm using shift to just rotate this a little bit. And this will be the, uh, the top of this uh, cliff area. And we can change the size of this. And we can kind of stamp this around here, something like that. And this will be the base from which that we start to build that topper, topper, top element. So you can see what I'm talking about with the color transition, right? like uh, with using the lighter dirt down here, even though we have some darker up here, uh, we really start to identify, even from a long distance away, your eye will immediately go into and look at this and say, oh, yes, I know what this is. This is the beach down here. I know what this is. This is the cliff up here. And once we add in our shadows and we do all of those things, uh, you'll see that this transition becomes a much, much more prevalent and much more convincing. Awesome. So that, that was a very, very simple, a super easy way to kind of uh, separate all of these areas out here. And you can see we can hide this and, and do it appropriately. Now what I'm going to actually do is go back into the Layers tab here. I'm going to go down into uh, these, these areas over here. And I'm going to hide these ones. And any one uh, over here uh, that I hide, uh, we're going to definitely need that one. Uh, but like these ones, uh, we won't need that one anymore. And if I hide it and I can't see it anymore, uh, then I know that I can delete it at this point. Yeah, so I can uh, select this one, and then I can hold down Control, and I can select all of these, and then I can just hit Delete. Now, if I hide my cliff, you can see that this is what is underneath. Very cool. Uh, before we go too much further, uh, let's add in a little bit of motion to our water here. So let's create a new effects layer and go into our effects tab. Uh, here, we can actually go down to uh, water. And you can see that that is going to put this all over the image here. We've got lots of different uh, ways that we can interact with the system. Uh, but you guys can see here, it kind of like undulates around. I'm so going to, at some point in the future, we're going to make like a, a a bio map, like an organic kind of map, and create like undulating uh, um, bits and pieces. I'm thinking like the interior of a monster or something. That sounds really fun to me. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down in underneath our cliff so we don't have to worry about the cliff too much. But you can see it's still going to interact with our, our land. Um, and our water, we want to make sure we have it above our land so that we can create our coastline with our brush very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask. So I'm going to enable a mask, and that's going to get rid of it, but only for a moment. And now because I have reveal area selected, I can now come in here and I can actually just uh, reveal this area. We'll do a, a rectangle. 
And then if I hold down Shift and Alt, I can kind of uh, begin to peel some of this away out here. You see now it's only affecting the water. I can bring this up uh, as far as I want to uh, to the edge. So if I hold down Alt, I can pull some of this stuff back in. And then I can blur the edge of that. And that's going to fade that out uh, into this. So you can see we get this nice kind of fade transition where the water gets less and less as it kind of goes up there. So now we can, what we can actually do is go into our parameters here. So if we want more of a kind of like a droplet where we get this cascading kind of element, uh, if we want more undulation, we can certainly do that, but uh, I don't think we need too much of that. And we'll drop this down a little bit. And then also the speed at which it goes. So you can see if we undulate, we can increase the speed dramatically. But we can have it um, more like a dreamy kind of effect too. So you can use these in lots and lots of different I think we're going to do something, uh, something along these lines. And then, yeah, we'll keep our speed pretty low. And then we have a, a horizontal kind of distortion here. And uh, now we can actually, we can add in several different uh, types of effects and they can all work in tandem to create some really, really cool kind of stuff here. Uh, but we're going to leave it at that for now. We have a really good kind of system here. Uh, we can start to work with some of the other interactions here. So let's go back into the coastal art pack. Let's work on our water for a moment here. I'm just going to add in some different uh, splashes and uh, other elements like that. We can also add in uh, some additional kind of um, wave type things. And we can do this either above or below our effects layer. And I'm going to take this effects layer, I'm going to drag it right into our water element. Just so that we always know that all of these things kind of go together. And we can use this effects layer later uh, in our underground area as well. Great. Let's go back into our coastline, and if we go into our effects, I believe we have this nice little splash image. I'm going to grab and drop that right over in here. Switch over to my stamp mode. And down on here on my coast uh, area here, uh, what you can see is I can, uh, I can now begin to uh, kind of paint this in. And again, I'm going to use A, and I'm going to drop down the opacity of this. And I'm just going to create a little bit of an interaction here uh, with my cliff. And I just want to, I'm going to actually lower down that opacity a bit more and kind of fade that out. So here we have like this water that kind of builds up in through here. And we can kind of uh, create a little bit more that's out through here. And we can do some larger ones. And you can see that just by adding a little bit of variation, to it, we're already beginning to create some really cool stuff. And this is all underneath. And I'm going to actually do another a layer of these. these is, this is my uh, early layer. That's going to be above this uh, water transition, the, the uh, water effects layer. And we'll be adding another effects layer to the water to We'll be doing lots of cool stuff here. Cool. Yeah, you can see that this is already beginning to take a little bit of uh, uh, a life of its own. It's starting to uh, develop a personality here. Cool. And we can do a little bit of transition. Maybe we'll lighten up right along the edge here. A little bit lighter. Just so we get a little bit of a, like a more of a foamy kind of interaction. It's not just so abrupt uh, along that one edge and then it appears there. Great. Uh, and now uh, what we can actually do is with this, because this is white, right? I'm actually going to use this to create uh, some darker elements in there as well. 
So again, uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to hold down A, and I'm going to bring it all the way back up again. Grab this color picker, and let's grab the uh, element here. I'm going to grab a darker version of this, something like that, and hit OK. Now on the same layer here, and we can actually, uh, we could make this a little bit darker too if we wish. Let's, uh, let's bring down the green a little bit, maybe something like this. And we'll hold down A and make this uh, not quite so opaque. And it's out here where it's going to be deeper, we're going to do some nice uh, darker kind of elements. We're all using the same uh, image here create lots of different effects. And I can do this with effects layers as well, which we are going to do. And at any time, if I've done something that I don't want, I can hit Control Z, because that's a little bit too much. Uh, I need to drop down my opacity a little bit more and do this a little bit more faded. And this is where our, our map creation uh, becomes a little bit more like painting, right? like we're actually creating a cool little image here. Now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little shadow uh, in the water itself along this edge. And we can actually do and create uh, rocks that are kind of coming up out of the water where you can see some of it under the water. There's lots of cool stuff that we can do here. And you can see this just this minor variation uh, of lighter and darker colors really makes a huge difference. And we're not really putting too much extra work in. It's really, though, a, a massive change. The other thing that we can do uh, to do some uh, changes is when we, when we start to do uh, our shadows, a lot of times we'll use the text layer for that. And I can show you guys how you can use that in your water as well. Cool, that's, a, that's enough with the water for now. We don't want to get too crazy. Uh, we're going to be creating a cave entrance. And now let's start with uh, doing our land over here. We're going to start to make this uh, into a real place. We're going to make this kind of jungly. So let's go into our jungle map pack 2. This is the one that was released last month. And there's going to be a follow up to this that's going to be out this month as well, an additional one. Now we're going to jump right into our decorations. And here we have all kinds of different plants and ruins and all kinds of cool stuff. So this should be pretty fun to use. And this is one we used. But if you guys don't want to use the jungle one, we can use um, kind of a classic uh, ground area, which we can certainly do as well. So please let me know if you, if you want to do something different. Uh, we'll be creating another painting layer. We're going to drop this down in underneath our clip. This is going to be all of the objects that don't reach up over the edge here. And we'll just call this uh, Rations Below. And so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go back down to my ground texture. And this is underneath our water. So I'm not going to be using anything that's going to be going up uh, to the water's edge unless I want it to be fading in underneath the water's so this is what I'm going to be placing all of my ground plants and things along those lines. So let's just gra grab some of these. And you can see here we have these nice little ground plants. And I'm actually going to switch my, uh, my grid system back to 100 by 100 now. And you can see this still lines up perfectly at the edge. We don't have to move to anything. Um, but now when I paint in, I can do it uh, more appropriately to the size of the tokens that are going to be. So we want to do something maybe along these lines. And I'm going to lower down the opacity a little bit. I want this just to be uh, more kind of texture than I want it to be like actual interaction. Let me make sure we have our stamp tools. And I'm going to start stamping this around here a little bit. And right up over on some of this stuff. And see, we're really creating like this feeling that there is uh, life here. Things grow. And we'll start to move up. Uh, we'll grab some of these other elements.
And what I like to do is kind of layer these. Uh, really gives a really cool kind of feeling. We can change the size, the rotation, make these little pockets of plants around. And we can grab some of these other elements as well. We have lots and lots of different kind of cool stuff that we can use from this art pack. Uh, I think we'll use... Well, actually, you know what? Let's let me show you guys. Uh, we can use some grass as well. This is that very kind of jungly kind of. I like to use uh, the opacity layers to kind of build up. As you can see here, you can really create a lot of texture fast as it overlaps here. Super cool. Before I saw the grass, I was going, oh, I was going to show you, yeah, yeah. Let me, let's create a new uh, painting layer above the uh, ground layer here. We'll call this one plant. I'll show you guys a neat little trick that you can do. If you don't want to uh, spend the time uh, doing a lot of uh, this kind of stuff, uh, let me show you guys a nice little trick that you can do to create uh, lots of images quickly. So uh, what we can do, let's go into our, some of these higher up uh, plants here. So I'll grab uh, maybe uh, something along these lines. There's, there's like a... Yeah, we'll grab. Let's let's use this one for right now. And here we have this nice little plant, and we'll start to paint this around. We'll do we'll do a couple of different ones here. Create these like uh, shrubs and whatnot. All right, you know what? We need something with a little bit more contrast. I'm just gonna hit Control Z, and we'll undo that. And uh, what we'll actually do, there is a plant in the new Abandon art package that will work really good for this. Uh, abandon. And let's go to our decorations and let's go into our nature. Uh, this one, I believe. Yeah. We'll grab this guy. Yeah, this is what I want. So here in our plants area, we're going to, we're going to, some cool little plants here. Yes, yeah, this is such a great uh, little thing here. Because we're underneath our cliff, you can see we can do these these cool little interactions where they just kind of like poke out, growing up along the sides of our cliff. And this is going to further help this this really dark kind of shrub. Will give us some really good contrast here. So what I'm going to do is here we have created a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to add in a bunch of different plants to this. Um, let's grab some of these ferns as well. These are some great plants as well. Ferns are always so great to use, aren't they? And again, if I do something that, uh, or not again, if I do something and I don't quite fully explain or or if the, you guys have a question, please feel free to throw it into chat. Um, I want to make sure that I cover everything. Let's add in a couple of little flowers into some of these. What do you think? Break these up a little bit. And maybe we'll do one more plant, uh, maybe something like this. Uh, so uh, if you ever want any sort of information along those lines, I'm not sure if these are updated in the wiki yet. These are all pretty new. 
but uh, to change the size and the rotation, it's it's uh, control for the size and shift for the rotation with the mouse. But the, you see this little question mark up here? If you click this, uh, it will actually launch our wiki uh, in the uh, of the appropriate place, right? So if you are in the image area, it, click this little uh, question mark. It'll actually bring up uh, the wiki for um, uh, Fantasy Grounds uh, of that particular area, the image area. And everything should be uh, uh, listed in there as far as all of the different uh, information that is. Um, but things change pretty rapidly, so sometimes it is a little bit behind as far as like the uh, uh, hotkeys, but most of them should be in there and it should be all listed according to um, the different tabs and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, it's specific. So, for example, if I do it in my assets window, uh, this will take me immediately to the uh, the wiki of of just the assets wiki. So it's it's super helpful. And the other thing is, is down here in the store, for example. So uh, if I'm in the images tab and I click this store button, it'll take me right to the store uh, of all of uh, map related assets. If I am over in the tokens section and I click the store button, it'll take me to the tokens area of the store and so on. So uh, you can find what you're looking for uh, quite quickly uh, right inside of Fantasy Grounds. So here, I'm going to just place in a couple more. And you can see these layers of plants uh, really start to uh, create some really cool kind of uh, elements, right? Like this is starting to feel uh, quite alive and like a real place. And that's what we want. So we can create a, I'm going to do a couple more of these, and then I'll show you. So what we can do is now that we've created all these plants over in this area, let's say we want a lot more plants, but we don't want to spend a lot of time doing this, right? Well, all I have to do is duplicate this layer. I have a whole new plant section. I'll drag it down in on, again, down to here. Oh, we actually probably want these above our water, right? We do. So uh, here I've created a, a copy of that. I'm going to go over into my Layers tab, and here, look, I have a whole copy of all of that stuff that I just created. And the cool thing about this is, is I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to rotate this. And it's not going to change the uh, orientation. It's just going to change the position. So if I've set up uh, images related to like shadows or whatnot, it'll maintain that with the stamp tool. And so now I can reposition this. I can even, uh, whoop, let me uh, click back on here. I can even uh, expand these out if I want to uh, make them a little bit wider apart. And I can layer this right on top of the one that I've already created and create uh, lots of different uh, images very fast. Now I can interact with this uh, system exactly the same way. So I can come back into my painting. And let's say there's some of these areas that, oh, I don't want to push here, I don't want it there. Uh, I can just remove some of the elements that I added, and boom, you can see that I have a very quickly uh, spent some time. You can actually, in doing it this way, you can spend some time uh, adding in the elements that you want and setting them up how you wish, and then just duplicate them. I can now create a new folder, and drop this down here, maybe we'll call this folder uh, plants, and we'll just drop those right in, we'll just drop those right in that folder. And there we have it. Now we have them all as one conglomerate once again. Oh, that's very cool, Bone Shooter. I, I would love to see some of your maps. Uh, you should definitely uh, share. Share everything that you've created. I would love to see them. So here we've built this uh, area very quickly, right? We've, we've done all of these things. Now let's uh, let's add in some uh, shadow elements uh, to our lower area here. So this is what we've just been working on our lower area. Uh, we set up some higher elements. 
Um, so let's uh, let's build this out. And if we were, if I wasn't such a gabber and talking constantly while we're doing this, we could have done this very fast. This could have we could have built this entire thing in just a few. So you can see how powerful Fantasy Grounds Unity is for creating these images. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, it's already integrated right into the system you're going to be playing with. So it's it's just phenomenal. I, I'm always amazed at this uh, creation process. Every time I make a new map, I love it so much. Uh, so let's create a new effects layer. I'm going to our effects tab. And this time I'm going to do uh, an adjust colors layer. So the all of our effects layers are very, very... Um, um, useful. They, I mean, I use them all the time. Almost every map that I make, I use effects layers. Uh, so, uh, and you can use them in lots of cool and inventive ways. Oh, that's awesome, Bone Shooter. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, and one of the cool things that you can do inside of Fantasy Grounds is even without any of the images whatsoever, you can just use the painting tools and, and actually do quite a lot of stuff. Um, I uh, had shown before how you can make like old school maps. Remember the old blue and white maps from, you can do that very easily uh, just with the uh, the tools in there as well. Lots of fun stuff. Excuse me. All right, so with this effects layer, I'm going to drop this down in underneath uh, Cliff here. Uh, we'll keep this specific for these lower um, elements. And we're going to be adding in some additional things. So this will get just changed. Um, I'm just getting close to the end of my time here. Uh, so I want to make sure that we get some pretty complete kind of elements here. I'm going to have to be uh, shutting down my stream a little bit early today. So I want to make sure I show you guys, uh, anybody who's new here, uh, some of these uh, stuff that we do. So here we are, we're going to be doing, um, adding uh, this effects layer. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to lower down the darkness. You can you see, you can see, we can bring this, uh, we can do some rather extreme kind of stuff here with it. And if we uh, interact with these, we can even make it uh, completely black, right? Or we can we can go the other direction, completely uh, white. So you can do lots of crazy amounts of adjustments even after the fact with these ad adjusted layers here. So let's put this back uh, to its default here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this to create uh, my shadows. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower down my green. Let's let's lower this down to something like uh, 45, and lower down the red to something like 45 as well. And then uh, we'll create. Uh, let's lower this down as well. Um, it's probably going to be too dark. Uh, we'll have to adjust these up, but uh, this will help us see what we're going to do first anyway. So let's create a new mask. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Alt, and I can start to uh, paint out some of these shadows. I don't have to be exact. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to blur these out a little bit, as you can see here. And I can start to paint. As you can see, these are a little bit dark. Uh, and I can hold down Shift and Alt if I do something that's a little bit too much. We might even want to blur it out a little bit more. And I'm just going to go around and add these in. Now in this environment as well, uh, I can start to paint in the shadows that might be cast from uh, these rocks. You can see that these shadows are quite a bit darker than I would like. I'm assuming that the light is coming from this direction. In my top left, so I can create these little shadows that come in off of here. They might not be too dark. We'll have to see. And we can even do some on our water here. And the other thing that we can do is is kind of do our our deeper water. 
And I'll hold down Shift and Alt and start to move this away. Let's let's blur this out a lot, actually. And what I'll do is when I I'll come back in here and let's, uh, add that back in, and we can start to add in some little variations in. Terms. Now, I, I like to go in and do all kinds of craziness. I'll come in here and start to break this stuff up, going back and forth. You guys certainly don't have to go to this level of intricacy. And then I'll... Uh, we come in here, yeah. So now let's begin to fade this in a little bit. So let's move this up to like 48. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll uh, bring in the element here. Um, you know what we should do? We should do two different ones, one for the water and one for the shadows. Yeah, why don't we do that? So let's... Um, Let's remove this. I'll show you guys how we can interact with that system a little bit better for what we want to do, uh, make it a little bit more subtle for the water elements. So let's come in here and uh, I'll just uh, begin to add in these. I'll create another uh, little layer here. So what we're basically doing is just a quick little um, interaction here. These don't have to be very precise. Uh, and we can actually do some on the ground if we wanted to, but we'll do that with the other one. And you can use Control Z on on uh, creating these. And we'll have to paint in some of the uh, shadows in addition to them. But yeah, that's uh, you can see that we can instantly. So let's create a new uh, effects layer. Let's do another um, adjust colors. And again, we're going to drop these down, but we're going to, let's drop all of them down. Well, let's leave the blue. Uh, this one's, well, actually, we wanted this one to be a little bit more subtle. So let's make this 48. Let's get this to be, um, yeah, something like this. And we're obviously going to drop this down in something right here. And now what I'll do is, you can see that this is going to be what helps us, uh, we can go to hide area, and I'm going to start to uh, break up this edge here. Just doing some little circles around here. And that's going to help give us that illusion that this, and we can we can change this. And one of the cool things about this is that we can change this in, at any time. Oh, very cool, uh, Bone Shooter. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out uh, right when I'm done. Um, so one of the cool things about using effects layers or or this uh, in this system is that we can change these even after the fact, right? Like if I want to make this uh, darker out here, uh, all I have to do is use this slider. And we can kind of just break up this edge here. Cool. And we'll we'll uh, we'll leave this specifically for our water.
Uh, this is a little bit too dark for me, so I'm going to put this back to uh, 48. And I just like it nice and subtle along this edge. All right, so uh, let's grab some of these uh, other images. Um, we can grab, oh, we can do some of these. Uh, let's grab some rocks. We can go back into the uh, jungly kind of art pack, maybe. And let's go into our ground textures. And this is one of the great other things about using these layers is that we can kind of go back and forth uh, between these. I'm going to grab some rocks. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go uh, with some of the rocks from the uh, 2019 art pack. So I'm going to click on that one and I'm just going to type in uh, rock. And this is going to bring up uh, all the different rocks that we have. Uh, I'm going to grab a couple of these like smoother ones, I think. And we'll put these out and around, coming out from underneath some of these uh, bushes and whatnot. So back into here. Make sure I have the uh, stamp tools. And you can see what we can do is, well, that one might be a little bit too light, don't you think? I we should go with like a darker ones. Let's just see. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. Yeah, I guess that'll be okay. So the cool thing about this is, is that uh, we have our shadows already built on top. Uh, so as we begin to place these around, and I'm going to use some of these uh, different elements as well. There's tons and tons of rocks in all of the different packages. We can kind of uh, more naturally begin to create these. And grab some of these, uh, like these larger areas here. And some of these ones have faded elements on the sides. And you can either do this, uh, like building uh, new kind of rock formations. I didn't really like that one. Let's grab this guy. Let's do some of these more rigid kind of rocks as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. Also on this particular layer, uh, let's go into, uh, let's just type in uh, root. Uh, I want to do some like roots and ground roots and whatnot that are kind of sticking out from underneath. And then we'll do some trees, and uh, we'll create the entrance to our cave. Um, so let's see, what kind of roots do I want to use? I think I'll use some of these ones to build out some cool little roots and whatnot. I'm going to do this right on the same uh, area here. I'm going to do some like coming out from like cliff areas.
Let's grab some of these ones a little bit more. I think what I'm what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Coming out from underneath some of these plants. And we can also go into, uh, let's go all the way up here. And let's go into uh, Vine Brush. Or we can just type in Vine. Let's just type in Vine. Because we might want to have some. We have all kinds of different cool vines and whatnot that we can use. I really like this one. And placing these in and around. And this is kind of cool to do over some of these rocks. It's definitely starting to feel like uh, some place that's kind of alive, isn't it? These cool little environments that we create. Oh, yeah. So let's, uh, and we can actually use some of these brushes too. So let me show you. So like, for example, this is a brush. And one of the things that the brush is uh, kind of depicting here. Yeah, let me kind of show you. We can even do it like a circle. I'm going to create a new painting layer and kind of demonstrate this. So a brush is uh, specifically something that we're going to use with the line, rectangle, or ellipse tool. So we can pull this out and it will make any of these shapes that we wish, as you can see here. Uh, or we can use the line tool. We can just kind of draw these out any shape that we want to. Uh, which is an amazing uh, kind of tool that we have here. So going into this uh, this ground textures area here, right? I can actually draw out vines along the ground here. And I'm just holding down my mouse button and just uh, pulling it right across the uh, area here. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that I think that uh, Fantasy Grounds is just does so exceptionally well integrating all of these systems together. Very, very fun. And we have a whole bunch of different ones like that. But let's let's just do uh, let's go into our a decorations layer, and now we'll add in some trees in the lower area down here. Uh, how high do you think that we should have this uh, cliff? Do you think that we should have... Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, unbelievably valuable. And you can also, uh, um, for example, you can click and drag out as well. If you hold down control, you'll snap to the grid while you do it. Uh, there's all kinds of great things. But you can even do things uh, with these tools, um, use them in creative ways. So, for example, let's create a new painting layer. Let's go off on a tangent here, real quick. Uh, let's go into the uh, 2000 team art. Grab a rock, like this round one. And let's say we want to do a circle of rocks. Boom, we can do that. Uh, if we want to do um, any number of different things, you can do a lot of cool stuff uh, interacting with this system. I did, um, and, you, and I've done uh, uh, things in the past too to show you guys how to create your own brushes, um, which is uh, pretty simple to do. Okay, so let's go into, uh, let's get rid of that layer. We don't need that. 
Now let's go into our decorations and now we're going to add in some trees. So I'm going to go back into the jungle art package. Jungle 2. Uh, we'll go into our decorations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can uh, you can do it with uh, brushes and uh, and there's lots of uh, lots of cool brushes that you can do along those lines. There's tons of uh, wall brushes and stones and. And uh, depending on, if you ever want to just know how all of the different brushes that are preset in uh, the official art packs or whatnot, you can just type in brush in the search engine, uh, from the uh, root area, and it'll show you all the different brushes that are currently available. Let's grab some palm trees here. And in our uh, decorations here, we'll uh, start to stamp out a couple of these, maybe a couple along the one, maybe one kind of, I think I have one that's kind of a little bit of an angle and out over the water. We can grab some of these variations as well. Yeah, see this one has a little bit of the trunk showing. Let's grab that one. Maybe we'll do something like this, and then we can we can actually kind of build some stuff in around it as well. Kind of like the idea of it kind of hanging out, thing along those lines. And we'll just kind of drop these in and around. And now I can go back into my uh, um, effects layer here and we can go to reveal area. And now I can uh, do some shadows coming off of these uh, trees. Now, if I don't want my trees, uh, I like the, the way that they, uh, the shadows kind of interact with the trees on the one side. But if you don't want that, all you have to do is drop this down in. Great, what a cool start that we have to our map, I think. We are moving right along. I'm going to build our little cave entrance over here. Um, and then uh, I'll probably call it for today. Um, but uh, And then we'll finish it up next time. We'll, we'll do uh, the transition all the way up to a snowy kind of peak up here on the left. Uh, and we can do some stuff in the water as well. We'll just jump right into it next time. Uh, so let's uh, let's begin to build out, and I'm going to do that right on the cliff uh, layer here. So I'm going to build out a little bit of a, a thing. We might do some underneath it as well. Actually, yeah, let's let's go down into maybe our decorations below. Well, we might want to build up some stuff around it. We'll see. Let's let's see. We can start off on our ground just and start to build out some like a little bit of a rocky kind of base here. Let's type in uh, rock, grab some of these. Yeah, another custom Mac for you, uh, Drake. Okay, so we want to be able to put this up in over the water. So let's do it on this layer here. Or we could do it in the in one of the plants layers. 
Yeah, let's just do it here. Or we could do it our, our own our own layer here. Let's do this uh, cave. And we can drop this down in underneath. Basically, just going to start to build up the uh, area around here. Make it kind of a natural kind of looking uh, element. And this is basically all you need uh, for your uh, cave entrance here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of it just with shadow uh, coming out from inside the cave. And then we can do uh, maybe some like hanging vines and whatnot on the cliff side of things. That sounds pretty cool. And I'll just uh, build this out a little bit. We'll do a couple of these things like out in the water. And then we'll have to readjust some of the elements there. Let's do something like here. And you can see I just used the same rock uh, over and over again to create this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this uh, soft image. And if you if you don't have these uh, this this image, um, it's actually located in the uh, 2019 map module, as well as a um, a brush for doing waves and stuff. <laughs> yeah, they certainly will. Players will certainly. Do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, this color picker here. I'm going to actually do this on a layer that's below. Oh, no, maybe I want to do it. Yeah, I want to do it on a layer. I'm going to drop down the red all the way down. I'm going to drop down my blue almost all the way down. And we'll do it to like 45. And now I can use my opacity. Begin to paint out this little the shadow coming out of here. Let's make this 25. And then I'm going to make it larger. Do this kind of little thing here. Nice. We've created a cool little cave uh, entrance. You can see how easily that was that was achieved. And now what I'm going to do is let's go. Uh, let's remove our little search here. And there are some nice little hanging plants. I'm going to grab something like this. We'll go onto the cliff side of things. We might even want to put this on its own layer. Uh, and I can drop down the opacity of it so it's not so um, intrusive, right? Like we can, or if you wanted to add it um, right onto the cave layer, right, you could certainly do it there too. Uh, I'm going to actually, let's reset this image. I'm going to make it much shorter, like this. Might even make it a little bit shorter here. Yeah, something like that. This is going to make it feel like it's uh, kind of perfect. You can see that that uh, does really have a really cool kind of feeling. As we build this up here, this will, this will blend in a little bit easier on the top there. We can also um, uh, 
we want, we can lower down the opacity a little. And go in the other direction to uh, fade it in a little. Awesome. What a cool little map we've started. What a great idea, you guys. I already feel like uh, that there's some really cool stuff here. Let's, uh, you know what we should do? We should put some shells on the beach. And I'll actually do this uh, on the ground texture layer. We'll do some that are kind of like fading out from underneath the uh, water here. We can do some actually we could do uh, our own layer for shells and we could put it above the water and then we can um, or well let's let's put it here first grab some of these shells and place them around yeah some stuff like this Because then we can do some that are like half buried and whatnot. How much fun is this, huh? This is so much fun. This is like a beach in like Animal Crossing or something. Collecting shells. And now what I'll do is I'll actually go back into the 2018 art pack and grab this little dirt brush or stamp. And on the same layer here, some of these, I'll do them like half buried here. Paint in some of these things. Yeah, look how cool that is. Maybe what we do is uh, the cave gets flooded on high tide or something. Water has been trapped in the inside. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to call it here for today. Uh, we got quite a bit done on this map. We got to reminisce about some of the old maps that we worked on. Um, so this next week, uh, on this next coming Saturday, we'll finish this up. We're going to do a, a little interior to our cave. We're going to do some underwater stuff. Uh, we could even do some underwater stuff out here if you guys. Uh, and we'll do uh, all of this up stuff. We're going to do another uh, layer 
uh, coming up here. So we'll do this like a tiered uh, kind of height. And then we'll, uh, yeah, what a great, uh, what a great map. I love this. Uh, this was a, such a good idea, you guys. Oh, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. I always appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with me on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you bet, Alex. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, usually we run until, we usually start at 3. We got started a little late today. We usually run until 6. Um, so hopefully this next uh, Saturday we'll get to do our full 3 hours. And, uh, we'll definitely have time to finish this map up and start something else. And hopefully there'll be some new releases uh, for uh, the upcoming uh, Fantasy Grounds uh, next big patch that we can talk about and go over some of that stuff. Uh, I do want to show you guys the new uh, reference manual builder that's coming out and how we can use that with our images uh, and all kinds of stuff like that. So great, everyone. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week. And we'll see you all next time.